Let's now talk about this big feat by India. We are now being joined by Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, live from Washington, D.C. Ghosh is a space scientist at NASA, the United States of America. Amitabh, welcome to We On. Absolutely. What does it mean for India space exploration missions following the approval of LIGO India by the cabinet? I think it's a very big deal. So just to back up a little bit and expand on what you just showed a little before, this is a very new way of looking at the universe. Um, first, first, let me tell you why telescopes are the primary way we can reach out to the universe. Um, the universe has a trillion stars and each um, in a galaxy, and then there are a trillion galaxies. So that would be 10 followed by 24 zero stars, one followed by 24 zero stars. So we need telescope technology to be the best. So, so far, telescopes means we are dependent on light, various frequencies of light, that's what we use. So gravity waves is another way of looking at the universe or hearing the universe, or however you can frame it. Right. It's like we, we look through eyes and we can also use our ears. This is like you're, you're starting to use your ears for the first time. Now, um, gravity waves have, like, how would you detect a black hole? A black hole absorbs all the light. So how do you detect it? So Einstein theorized it in maybe 2015, but it's only, sorry, 19, 1900s, late 1900s, but it's only in 2015 that uh, a LIGO instrument confirmed the existence of black holes. Similarly, we use so many elements in our life, but did you know that hydrogen and helium can be just produced in our own sun? Mm -hmm. Between helium and iron, everything else can be produced in a much massive star. And beyond that, everything that we see beyond that, all elements, they have to be produced in neutron stars, supernovas, etc. And how do you confirm that? So the gravity meters are a way to confirm that. Then, you know, you think of space-time, right? It's very confusing, Einstein's rel relativity. The, one of the most confusing parts which of relativity is time is relative. In other words, if you are on a spaceship um, traveling at half the speed of light and I am on Earth, time passes very differently. Uh, time passes very, very slowly if you're traveling very fast. So it's a very... Uh, the, the, the fact that time can be relative and not constant in different places is very confusing. Mm -hmm. But again, this LIGO technology is one of the ways to uh, verify it. So it's, it's kind of a different window to answer a lot of things of the universe, like uh, there are questions about dark matter and dark energy. Um, so, so there is a lot going on with how the universe is deformed in space-time right. by large objects. Ro Doctor, yes, that's a lot of explanation. I'm also trying to understand all you have said, but I just uh, right. want you to explain a little further about this gravitational waves. But uh, before you do that, what would you say are the prospects of India on space missions? What will it take for ISRO, for example, to reach NASA's levels? See, this is already at the forefront. I wouldn't, I mean, this is already at the forefront. There are two other observatories like that. So, so you know, it is very difficult to compare, um, as you said, NASA's levels. So, so different frontiers have different benchmarks, right? Mm -hmm. So here I would say this is kind of at the frontier. I mean, this will be very futuristic and um, will uh, address many new questions that have never been answered or even questions which never have been asked. So it's, I would say this is um, a very futuristic project. Right. Futuristic project indeed. I want to know from you, tell us more about uh, what India hopes to achieve with this LIGO project. So one of the most difficult things in science and in these types of projects is um, what is going to be discovered. So you can understand, uh, see, it is like there's a term called serendipity. So you kind of don't know out there. You can figure it out only after you see the data and you see interesting correlations and um, you can deduce something. Um, so uh, uh, for Earth, um, um, 
I would say that if you if you think of the Hubble Space Telescope, the way one of the most dis- important discoveries of the Hubble was accidental, mm-hmm. um, and that's how um, it, it was the discovery of an estimate of how much stars and galaxies are there in the in the universe. But so so here, I would say that there would be refinements of existing theories, and um, a lot of uh, and some of what. Albert Einstein hypothesized can be verified um, in terms of um, with real data. Uh, but other than that, I would say um, it is very hard to forecast what is going to come out of it. <laughs> this is a lot. Like it's, it's, uh-huh. it's with the Mars missions, right? I mean, yeah. uh, so, the you know, there's a Mars uh, samples are going to be returned. But w- will you find life? Well, nobody knows. Nobody so, knows indeed. Um, Nobody knows indeed, right. Doctor. <laughs> we'll have to right. leave it there. There's a lot to ponder for both our viewers and myself. But uh, Dr. Amitabh Gohosh, thank you very much for talking to We On while it is one today. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.